Hello and welcome to my laser diode driver and modulator using a L7805 series regulator. This is part one video of probably two videos. Many moons ago I purchased a one pound very cheap laser and upon sort of thinking about it I thought what else can this laser diode, this pointer, do other than pointing at things and so I thought I thought around this and recently I thought well see if I can make a certainly explore a very simple or basic optical remote control what is the difference between a laser optical control and say a television remote control well the television remote control is digital and so therefore operates in increments. My television's volume control is not linear, it's not an analog function, it's a step function. So I thought of building the simplest, most basic possible remote control system for a laser. Incidentally, the other advantage of using a laser diode is distance on a clear day line of sight. <laughs> A laser diode can go vast distances, so the transmitter and receiver can be, on a clear day, a fair distance apart. I don't know what you would use this for, but it's interesting, isn't it? It's worth exploring. On the receiver, what I wish to do, because the transmitter operates in a proportional control, so I'm varying the repetition rate of the pulses and incidentally I'm using quite remarkably a 100 milliamp 7805 to not only drive the LED but to also modulate it so the output of my receiver will drive well it's a type of motor isn't it but an analog meter and hopefully I will get really precise fine control over this meter remotely. I can't personally, where I'm living, test this over distance, but there is certainly no reason why if you're operating a laser system over a short distance, why that couldn't be scaled up to a longer distance and still get very effective control over this little analog meter. On the far left here the oscilloscope which is set to 2 volts and 2 milliseconds per division. Throughout the middle here is the optic assembly and on the far right hand side we have the laser diode, the red laser diode mounted on a fair chunk of iron for stability in the middle here we have a lens, a convex lens, which focuses the laser beam onto the target. Behind the target we have a reel of solder for support. <laughs> and then on the bottom right hand side we have the original case that the laser diode came out of. And next to that is a small label that informed me that it was, is, a one milliwatt laser. In front of us here is the printed circuit board which has mounted on it a 555 oscillator and the L7805 series regulator. Next to it in the bottom here is a potentiometer which is an analog control of the repetition rate on the left hand side with the oscilloscope the repetition rate of these pulses. These pulses are fixed in time and I think, can't quite read the display here, but I think each pulse is about 550 microseconds. The overall frequency here as displayed is about 100 Hertz and that is approximately center of the potentiometer here. Of course this system is not limited to just an analog meter you could use it on say 
a motor or something of that sort. There are probably many applications that you could use analog control at a remote distance. I thought I would show you the laser beam in the dark. It is in a light room, hardly visible, and I'll tell you why that is in a second. But let me just put a white card in front of this and you can see the beam itself. Of course having some smoke would probably help but I'm a non-smoker. Let's just do that and you can see that the beam is there. Right so why is the beam so low? Well I can tell you. I'm not qualified in the operation of lasers. I don't believe you should operate at home powerful lasers that you cannot see or feel the damage it can be that can be done to your eyes. I've recently had both my eyes, the cataracts, removed and believe you me, I would not want a laser beam damaging them. So I've dropped the power of the laser. It was originally one milliwatt which is said to be safe and I accept that. But the power of this laser has been dropped to about a quarter of that. So what are we talking about? 250 microwatts, a very low power indeed. But I still would be cautious about any laser beam getting into your eye. I would just like to add that operating the laser beam at a low power kind of emulates the system at a distance between the transmitter and the receiver. Now for the circuit diagram explanation. I shan't go into the fine details of how a 555 works. It is very well covered in other places on the web. In principle we have C1 which is a timing capacitor with a fixed charge rate defined by R3 and after 500 microseconds the 555 goes into discharge mode on pin 7 which causes VR, VR1 causes a discharge of C1. The output to the laser is across these two points here. So the laser diode is across these two points. The pulse, the 500 microsecond pulse to the laser is approximately 23 milliamps. It's quite low. And by the way, it's worth noting that a 555 at pin 3, which is its output, is capable of sinking and sourcing about 200 milliamps. So I take the power that drives the laser directly from the output of the 555. And in between is a constant current source derived from the ubiquitous L7805 in a constant current mode. So if you take the output, and I chose the lowest output 7805 volts, if you put 5 volts across R1 here, you will find that it delivers a approximately 23 milliamp pulse. Now the 5 the 7805 can be operated at quite a high frequency. So there's no problem in actually using this little series regulator as a driver for a laser. The output voltage every time the pulse goes positive for 500 microseconds, the uh, voltage across the laser is approximately 3 volts to the particular red laser I'm using. Now, as the supply line is 12 volts, I wanted to be absolutely sure that under a fault condition, the 12 volt supply never reaches the laser diode, which is the reason why the Zener diode is there. The Zener diode will clamp the voltage to 3.3 volts, very close to the voltage required to drive the laser itself. With the laser disconnected, I wanted to make sure that the 7805 had some form of load on it, which is the reason why R2 is there. 
The capacitor C2 is standard decoupling and the diode D4 protects the circuit from reverse supply. So this is the thing with this circuit. Who would have thought that you could derive enough power directly from a 555 to drive a laser via a 7805 that's being modulated? As far as I can see, the only concern I have with this circuit is to do with burden voltage. If we just have a look at this in terms of voltage, we start off with 3 volts across the Zena. You've got with the series regulator in a constant current mode, 5 volts across R1. We'll add those two together, we've got 8 volts. You need about 2.5 volts across the series regulator, which brings us to 10.5 volts. And if we look at the voltage on the output of pin 3, the maximum you've got to allow for at least 1 volt drop on the 555. So that brings us to 11.5 volts. So you can see 12 volts is fairly close to the burden voltage. And when testing this circuit, I found actually you could reduce the supply down to about 10.5 volts, 10 volts, before the output of the laser voltage dropped from 3 volts. For your information, I've included some oscilloscope pictures. The upper yellow trace is directly across the laser diode and it represents 3 volts peak to peak. The lower blue trace, which is 8 volts peak to peak, is on the output of the L7805. The first picture represents 35.7 Hertz and that is at the bottom end of the potentiometer. The next picture is at 100 Hertz and that is the potentiometer midway. And finally, the last picture represents 312 hertz, which is the potentiometer at its maximum. Here is a picture of both the laser optical transmitter on the left and the laser receiver on the right. In the middle, stuck on an AA cell, is the photodiode for the receiver. The receiver will be the subject of the next video. I hope this video was of interest to you and thank you for viewing it.